Hi there and welcome to another short web snippet brought to you by the guys here at Innova Systems. My name is Matthew and this time I'm going to be talking a little bit about simulation and the trend tracker tool that we have available to us. Okay, so what you'll see I've got here is a small stool. It's a very simple part and what I'm going to be doing is adding ribs to the underside of this section. So you'll see I've got a number of features that in this case I've suppressed. We could by all means be making changes to our model and creating new features. But what I'm going to be doing is changing the geometry here, rerunning studies and using the trend tracker to monitor our results. So let's first of all have a look at using our baseline configuration and actually setting it as a baseline. So here we've got our study and you'll see that I've got two split faces in the middle which I've used to apply the force in this sort of shape so that we can replicate feet perhaps. You'll also see that I've got fixtures on each of the four feet. Okay, let's have a look at the first set of results. What we've got here is our standard stress and displacement plots. So we can see we've got a particularly high stress exceeding the yield strength in this case. So we've got a failure here. So this design clearly isn't suitable. But what we can do now is by right clicking on the properties and going to trend tracker, you see we get an additional trend tracker icon in our tree. Right clicking on the trend tracker icon now, we can set this current configuration as our baseline. So then every improvement or perhaps negative impact that we have on our designs will be compared to this original design. So let's have a look how that works. First of all, I'm just going to try adding a set of shallow ribs. I've called them shallow because I've got some deeper ones to examine shortly. And we're just going to run that again. So what you'll see we've got now is a new set of stress results and displacement results. And if I expand the trend tracker tree now, you'll see that we've got three items here. We've got mass, displacement and stress appearing in that list. If I double click any of these, we get a plot which shows us how that value has changed. So in this case, how the mass has changed from the first iteration to the second. So you'll see as our baseline, the first iteration comes in here and our second iteration has come in at about 0.122 kilograms. We can also do the same for the displacement and the stress values. We'll come back to all of that later. For now, let's have a look at some different iterations. I'm just going to try one with deeper ribs, but this time only in the one direction. And you'll see we've got the results of that here as well. Let's keep adding some iterations now. Going to add a crisscross. We're also going to try including a large ring in that rib structure. And I'm going to see what difference it makes if I use diagonal ribs. I'm also going to experiment with different ring size. And also, I'll try it again with the shallow ribs. So check back with me in a second and we'll have a look at each of those results. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you'll see uh, I've been pretty busy. We've got up to 11 iterations now. Uh, so let's have a look at our displacement plot. And you can see how the design changes that I've been making have had an impact on that maximum displacement value. So you can see from our very first iteration where we didn't have any ribs at all, adding ribs does have initially a very significant change on its own. And then you can see how making changes to our rib structure, once we've reached iteration four, between four and nine, we've actually not had that much of an impact on the maximum displacement. You can then see that I made one other change which didn't seem to have such a great impact on the maximum displacement. And then step 11 was a bit better than that. So what else does the trend tracker give us? Well, we do have the trend journal available. If I just double click this, you'll see that SolidWorks has been generating a word report for us. Uh, so in this report we have information about our baseline configuration and then as I scroll down we go through the simulation completion time and each of the three parameters for each of those iterations as we went through the process. And that will save in the same directory as the results for the simulations. 
Also, if I right click on the trend tracker, you'll see I can view the gallery. And what that's going to do is pop open a window in which I can view each of the individual iterations and the results for each of those. And these are all images that SolarWorks has saved out on its own automatically for us to review after we've conducted our studies. And then one final thing that I would really like to draw your attention to is the opportunity for us to restore model to a previous iteration. So if I select this item here, you see we get a drop down list of all the previous iterations that we conducted. So if I switch back to iteration 7 for example, you'll see that SolarWorks now opens up the model at iteration number 7. So you'll see here under the part name we've got stool underscore 007 which refers to iteration number 7 and in actual fact if I pop open the directory in our results folder you'll see we've got that gallery folder just there with all of the images from our results and we've also got the trend files if I pop open iteration 7 you'll see that we've actually got the part has been generated on its own so all of the previous iterations up to there we can still revert back to and carry on investigating okay that's about all I've got time for that's a quick insight into the using the trend tracker as always if you want to get in touch with us you can do so by dropping into our website which is www.innova-systems.co.uk you can give us an email at support at innova-systems.co.uk or you can call us on the number you see on your screen now.